will be the light. Amen. Not only are we going to have streets of gold to walk on, but that's, we should have had it in Sunday school. You should have been here if you missed it. But that river that flows from the throne of God right Amen. down Main Street, it's going to flow right on out the valley and it's going to run in to the Dead Sea. And the Dead Sea is going to become alive. I'm talking about something that's never, ever had life before. Folks, if you're in that shape, if you've never had life before, when I, you know, us old times, we call it getting under the spout where the glory comes out. Amen. It's still that living water. Yeah. It's the same stuff. You can ha you can get under that spout today. You can sit off over there and stay dry if you want to. As last year shucks. 
or you can get under the spout where the living water comes out and that which is dead becomes alive with that blood washed throne, I will shout and sing just over in the glory land. Glad hosannas to Christ the Lord and King. Just over in, oh, sing it, let it ring out for Jesus. Just over in the glory. Do you believe it this morning? Oh, I'll join the happy angels band. Just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land, there with the mighty host. Whoa, I'm going to stand just over one more time. Sing that chorus. I'm Daniel Watson, pastor of First Assembly of God in Howell, Oklahoma. We are a local church with a worldwide vision of reaching out to people with the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. For the next few minutes, we want to reach out to you through the messages preached in this broadcast. As you watch this message, we pray that God will speak to your heart and that your life will be forever changed by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Would you stand across this sanctuary for the reading of God's Word? I will be reading this morning from Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5 through 13. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 through 13. The Bible says, Jesus is speaking here. It says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be ye not therefore like unto them. For your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you lift your hands one more time toward heaven, and let's pray for God's anointing upon this message. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace, for your mercy. Lord, for you are faithful, God. Lord, throughout the generations of time, your mercy endures to all generations. Your truth is everlasting. And Father, we pray that in this message this morning, Father, that you would speak to our hearts. Lord, that our minds may be open to the truth of your word. Lord, that we may understand the importance and the purpose of prayer in our life and in our church. Change us today by the power of your Spirit, and we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. This morning I want to begin a new sermon series, a, a series of messages entitled The Power of Prayer. I believe that prayer is essential to the church. I believe that prayer is essential in every day of our life. You see, when you pray according to the Word of God, you have the power to move the hand that created this universe and all that is within it. 
And so over the course of the next eight weeks, I am going to be preaching about different areas of our life and and in our church where prayer is important and essential. This morning, I want to talk to you on the subject of praying with other people, praying for other people and with other people. Later in this series of messages, I will be talking about praying in agreement, praying for salvation, praying for laborers in the field of the harvest, praying for lost souls, prayer for healing, prayer for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and finally, prayer for deliverance. In the past few weeks here at Howe Assembly of God on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday nights, we have been having some tremendous services and, and altar services. As the worship has been uplifting, church attendance is up, especially as I mentioned a moment earlier on Wednesday night in our children's ministry. But do not take for granted when you see growth taking place in the church. This does not happen just by chance. But I believe we are seeing the things take place in our church today. We're seeing the growth. We're seeing the anointing of God in our worship because there are people who pray. There are people who are faithful and praying for God to do a work in this church and our ministry and in this community. You see, on Sunday mornings, every Sunday morning, every Sunday night and Wednesday night before every worship service, there are faithful people that gather here day in and day out, and they pray for this church. They pray for lost souls. They pray for this community. On Thursday mornings at 10 o'clock, there are people that come into the sanctuary and they pray. We have an intercessory prayer team. We have people that send text messages every time a prayer need is submitted to this church and people are praying for around this community and around this nation and God only knows what's going to accomplish and when people began to pray you cannot have faithful people who are praying together and seeking the face of God and God not take notice of that and move upon those prayers See, Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. And this morning, I want us to look into the word of God and learn from his word on how to pray with and for other people. Did you know there was a right way and a wrong way to pray? Jesus has said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Church, we do not pray to gain attention to ourselves. You see, there is nobody in this world that you need to impress with your prayer life because if we are only praying to be heard by individuals and to impress other people by the way that we pray, then what I want to say is you are not praying unto God, but you are praying unto men and trying to seek the favor and trying to seek the approval of mankind and every time you try to seek man's approval it will not last and it will not work for God to do a work in your life. If you want to impress anybody with your prayer life just impress God. If God is impressed then the mission is accomplished and everything else is settled and God will take care of you. In verse number 6 Jesus said but thou when thou prayest Enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. When you are praying, and in this setting I believe Jesus is talking about personal prayer time, he is saying that we need to shut ourselves in with God. In other words, get some place to pray where there are no distractions. That's why on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, we have worship music playing here in the sanctuary during prayer time so that as people pray that we can cut down the distractions of others who are talking inside and out of the sanctuary. But as you begin to pray, shut yourself in with God and pray and talk to him as though you were kneeling before his great throne and communicate with him and worship him because of who he is. But as we begin to pray, we must be careful because Jesus has assured us there is a wrong way to say our prayer. In verse 7, Jesus says, But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, 
for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. There are some people that I have seen in other churches and, and whenever uh, there's people going down to the altar, they have good intentions. I know their intentions are good, but their method is not quite right. They will see someone who has gone down to the altar who has come forward for prayer and they will go and act as though they're praying with them. Though, and that part is good. I love it when people come and pray for others who, are, who have gone to an altar in prayer. And so when men go to the altar, there immediately needs to be two other men that comes and, and stands beside them and, and pray with them. When women go to an altar, the, the women need to gather around that particular woman and pray with them that God would do a work in their life. But uh, it's more than just laying hands on them. It's more than just uh, uh, singing the worship song with your hand laying upon an individual. Some time ago, this happened in, in another church. I saw a man that was walking around supposedly praying with other people. He was chewing gum faster than a baseball player. But he walked up to an individual, just laid his hand upon him, kind of gave him the, uh, a, a wet sandwich, so to speak, on the shoulder. Still chewing gum, just looking around, smiling, watching everyone else, uh, what was going on. You know, honestly, I would rather that individual just go back to their seat and sit down because they're being more of a distraction than they are worshiping. I have also seen another circumstance. One time when I was at the altar, somebody came up to me and put their hand on my shoulder and they just said, bless him, Lord, bless him, Lord, bless him, Lord, over and over and over again. What, does, what would happen if I was having a conversation with you and I walked up to you and I just said the same three words over and over? and over and over. You would not get anything out of that conversation, would you? And first of all, you'd probably think I'd lost my ever-living mind, and you'd probably say, you're just acting like a heathen. And that's exactly what Jesus is saying about people who are just constantly saying the same words over and over. He said, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. And so what Jesus has done, he has given us, he has given us an example of how to pray. Now, when we look at the Lord's Prayer, this is not a prayer that He has given us and telling us, this is what you need to pray. Just repeat after me and this is what you need to pray. No, He's giving us an example of how to pray. See, in other words, we don't need to just keep saying the same words over and over. He said in verse 9, verse 13, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed to be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When we pray, we must pray according to the will of God. And the will of God is found in the Word of God. Now, some people may find this shocking, but this happened to me some time ago. Have you ever wondered to yourself, what is God's will for my life? Has anyone ever asked that question? What is God's will for my life? If you have never asked yourself that question, just stick around, live life a little bit longer, experience a few difficulties, and you will also be asking yourself that question. What is God's will for my life? One time when I was praying, I said, Lord, help me to know your will for my life. I was praying for direction and ministry. I was praying for direction and finances. And basically, I was just praying for direction in life as general. Just a confused young adult at that time when all I had to do was just open the word of God and clearly see what God's immediate will for my life was at that moment. Did you know that every one of us, if we would just look into the word of God, we can see what God's will is for our life. Here it is. This is his will for the present time. Don't worry about the present time. That's it. Don't worry about the day-to-day -day things. This is what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Verse 25 through 32, he says, Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, 
what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to a stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall not he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. If you really want to know what God's will is in your life, do not worry about the stuff of everyday life. Instead, this is what Jesus says we must do. Verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That is God's perfect will for every individual in this world. Seek first his kingdom. Seek first his righteousness. And what's he say? All other things. It's just trivial things. He said, just the, the trivial things, they will be added into your life. If you want to have a successful prayer life, first of all, we must study the Word of God. Study of the Word of God and prayer go hand in hand. We study the Word of God so we can know how to pray, so that we can know the will of God. And when we pray according to the will of God, which is His Word, we will then know some things that we do not even need to be asking God for. You know, there are a lot of people that pray for God to do things in their life that they really have no business asking God to do. Let me give an example. Uh, you don't just go out to a car dealership and, and, and grab a bottle of anointing oil and start waxing that car with anointing oil and say, I'm claiming this car in the name of Jesus when you know good and well that you do not have the money to buy that particular kind of car. Now, I know there are pastors and there are churches around this world and even here in the great, amazing state of Oklahoma that say, just name it and claim it and it will be done in Jesus' name. I've got four words to say about that. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time asking for things that you have no business asking for. This is what James chapter 4 verse 3 says, Ye ask and receive not. Because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. In the New Living it says, And even when you ask, you do not get it, because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. When we pray according to the will of God, God will supply those needs. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. When you are praying for a particular circumstance in life, first of all, you need to make sure that you are living your life according to the word of God. Be sure that you have no unforgiveness forgiveness of sin in your life and know that you have repented of all your sin because if you are living life that still has sin in it, if you are living a life of a carnal mind, that lifestyle can cause your prayer life to be ineffective. But if you are living a life that has been forgiven, if your life has been washed clean by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, God will hear your prayer and your prayers will be answered. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 6 verse 17 through 19, I cried unto him with my mouth and he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily God hath heard me. 
He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. The Bible also says in Psalms chapter 37, verse 3 through 5, Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. So as we began to pray in our life for a need, we must also be patient and wait upon God. You see, God has promised that he will answer prayer when we pray in his name according to his will, which is found in his word. And you can rest assured that when God makes a promise, he will bring that promise to pass in his own way. He will bring that promise to pass in his own time. And when he brings that promise to pass, he does not need my influence. He does not need your influence nor our input to bring that promise to pass. If God said it, he will do it in Jesus' name. As you pray for a need, we must continuously be patient. You see, that's why it's so important to be patient and wait upon him. We must trust in him and be patient. But that's some place where we neglect in our prayer life so many times. We pray and we pour out all of our needs to God, but then we don't tarry in the altar. We don't wait for God to respond. If I was talking to you and I come up to you and, and I just spilled all of the things that I'm facing in my life to you and then after I was through talking, I just turned around and left. How is that communication? I didn't wait for you to respond. I didn't wait for you to answer. It's the same way in our prayer life. When we pray, we must wait upon God. You see, there is a benefit to waiting for those who will just take some time as they pray and wait upon the Lord. Waiting upon God is so important in our prayer life. Don't get in a hurry when you're praying, but as you pray and you pour your heart out to God, take some time and just wait. Take some time and wait in his presence. Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. As we wait upon God, he is going to strengthen us. He is going to empower us. He is going to bring us courage. He is going to bring deliverance. He will rescue you. He will guide you. He will direct you. And when you wait upon him, he will give you power and fill you with his spirits. Psalms chapter 40, verse 1 through 3 says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. We must wait upon him, and let God do a work in our life, because he will answer, and he will see us through. When we pray, we must pray with faith. Without faith, it's not going to be possible. But Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 6, explains to us what faith is and how faith works. The Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made by things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him 
to have faith means that we believe that God is able. That's why when we pray in faith according to the word of God, we know that God is able to meet all of our needs because we have already seen in the word of God. In Mark chapter 9 verse 23, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. We pray with faith and believing according to the word of God that God is able because in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 we see that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us when we pray according to the will of God and when we have faith and we believe we understand that we serve a God who is the same he is never going to change I understand this church that if Jesus healed people when he was on this earth 2,000 years ago, I believe beyond any doubt that God is still in the healing business. That if you call upon him to bring healing, that there is healing in the name of Jesus. If Jesus cast out devils over 2,000 years ago, then I know that today in the year 2020, he can still cast out devils today. Why? Because we serve a God that never changes. We serve a God that is still seated upon his throne in heaven. There is no change in his power. There is no change in his authority. There is no change in his will. There is no change in his promise. There is no change written down in the word of God. This Bible is still the same as it was thousands of years ago. There is no change in his word. There is no change in the personality of who he is because the Bible says in Malachi 3 verse 6, for I am the Lord and I change not. In Hebrews 13 and 8, the Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is never going to change. He is never going to leave us or forsake us, but he is as close as the mention of his name. If you have a need in your life, all you've got to do is call on that name that's above every name, because at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is life and forgiveness and shelter and, and the time of storm in the name of Jesus. If you can have any word in your vocabulary, you should have that name that's above every name. You should have the name of Jesus because when I call on the name of Jesus, my problems go away. When I call on the name of Jesus, he lifts me up and sets my feet on a rock. When I call on the name of Jesus, all things are possible. When I'm going through a midnight hour and it seems as though all hope is gone, I have assurance because I know in whom I have believed. I will not compromise. I will not be denied. I will not despair. I will not fear for he has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So I'm going to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. I'm going to put on his whole armor so I can stand against this world. And if God be for me, who can be against me? I'm going to call on the name of Jesus, the name that is worthy to be praised. Blessed be his name forevermore. Hallelujah. 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 When we pray according to the word of God, which is his will, we must be patient and wait upon him. And we must believe that God is going to bring it to pass. Church, this works when we're praying individually. It works when we're praying in agreement with other people. So when we pray for others, whether individually or if we're praying through uh, the laying on of hands for another individual, we must pray according to the word of God. We must believe on him and we must wait in his presence. But before we can be effective in our prayer life for or with other people, there are a couple of things that first of all, we need to be sure of. First of all, be sure that there is no sin in your life. You see, that is important because sin can bring a hindrance into our prayer life. 
Sin separates people from God. Remember the Bible says in Psalm 66 verse 18 that if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. We must know beyond any doubt that our sins have been forgiven, that our life has been cleansed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Second, we must be full of the Holy Spirit. The baptism in the Holy Spirit with the initial physical sign of speaking in other tongues. That is our source for spiritual power when we are praying for other people. You see, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is essential if you want to pray to see results. But I know today... In this high-tech day and age that we are living in, there are some people that, that think they're too dignified to be emotional when they go to an altar to pray. They don't want to clap their hands. They don't want to speak in tongues. They don't want to lay hands on people that they pray for. And some may say, well, I don't even need that kind of power that you're talking of because I'm a self-made individual. I don't need any kind of that power. I don't need to speak in tongues to live my life for God. Well, to an extent, I guess I could agree with them because first of all, you don't need the Holy Ghost to live a carnal life. You don't need the Holy Ghost to play games in church. So they're not casting out devils. They're not laying hands on the sick. They're not believing for God to bring healing in people's lives. They're not believing in miracles. They're just doing their own thing. But the truth of the matter is this, that the divine supreme head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one who has all power in heaven and earth, the one who is the lily of the valley and the bride of morning star, the one who stood in revelation and said, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. This same Jesus who said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against us. He has given us an an authority. He has given us a command and he says the works that I have done I want you to do as well and greater works than these will you do because I'm going to go to the Father and I'm going to pour my spirit out upon flesh. That means he has given us the authority to cast out devils. He has given us the authority to raise the dead. He has given us the authority to lay hands on the sick to do the works that are supernatural and this assignment that God has given his church is it is an assignment that is too big for us to accomplish in our own strength and in our own might. But I do have the assurance and the word of God that it is not by might nor by power, but it's by his spirit, saith the Lord. And I'll tell you what, when you call on the name of Jesus, he will bring it to pass. He will bring it to a close. Every circumstance that you face in life, call on the name of Jesus. Trust in him and he will see you through all the time because God is good and he's never going to change. See, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is our source of power when we are praying for other people. Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and into the uttermost part of the earth. When Jesus came into this world to establish his church, he lived his life as an example for each one of us. The same miracles that Jesus did can be accomplished in every one of our lives when we pray according to the word of God and to the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 12 through 13, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son church that's where our authority is it's in the name of Jesus again we read about that authoritative name in Mark chapter 16 when we pray we do so in the name of Jesus just before Jesus was taken up into heaven, he gave some last words of wisdom to his disciples. And we see the results of what happened when these disciples were being obedient to his message. And the same message that Jesus gave to his disciples and the apostles of the early church, this same message can be to anyone who is a Sunday school teacher, who is a preacher, a prayer warrior, an altar worker, a pastor, evangelist, and to every Christian who calls upon his name. And Mark 16, verse 20, 
In Mark 16, verse 15 through 20, Jesus said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. And in this next verse, we see what takes place when these disciples were obedient to the command of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. When you call upon the name of Jesus, all things are possible. Now there's one final principle that I want to cover this morning concerning praying with people. When we pray, we must pray with a pure heart, with a clear mind. We pray for others with faith and believing that God is able to bring it to pass. We pray according to the Word of God which is His perfect will. We pray with power and the anointing and the authority of the Holy Spirit. And finally, we must pray in the Spirit and with the understanding. Now, what does it mean to pray with the understanding? When you pray for an individual, you need to pray for them so they understand the words that you say. You see, when people hear you pray, they are encouraged. They are motivated when they hear you pray out loud for them. And when you are praying according to the Word of God, where people can hear, especially when you quote the Word of God as you pray, that is a powerful tool to see results as you pray for an individual. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it instructs us to pray with the understanding. That means we pray in our spoken language and we make our prayers audible so people we're praying for can understand. So they hear the words that we're saying and then they are strengthened, they're edified, they're motivated, they're encouraged by hearing the words that we pray. But not only do we pray with the understanding out loud, but we also must pray in the Spirit. We must pray in the Spirit in an audible voice. That means we must pray in tongues. And we do that by yielding ourselves to the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit prayer language begins to intercede on our behalf. Now, why is praying in the Holy Spirit so important? It's because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 through 19, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. As we pray individually, and as we pray together as a church, I want us to be reminded, Jesus has already said in his word in Mark chapter 11, verse 17, my house shall be called of all nations, the house of prayer. Prayer is the key to success in our spiritual walk with God. Prayer changes things. And I want to challenge you this morning, take a step forward in your prayer life. Take a step forward in your confidence and prayer, not just as individuals, but as people gather together, seeking the face of God, praying for one another, believing together with the purpose of seeing God's glory manifested in our lives and in our church in a supernatural way. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 through 20, Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. But where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Prayer needs to be the center of our life. It needs to be the center of our church and a, a, a perfect prayer life. A, a, an example of a prayer life begins when we surrender our will, when we surrender our life to Jesus Christ and we become his child and we say, Lord, I just want you to be glorified in my life. 
to be what he has called us to be, to seek his face, to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. That's what he said. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added. If you're hungry today for God to do a work in your life, all you've got to do is call unto him, surrender to him and say, Lord, I need you more than I've ever needed you before before. I need you in my life. I need your anointing. I need your power. When you call upon him, he's worthy to be praised and he will answer when we call on his name. Can we stand together? With every head bowed, every eye closed, please no one leaving just yet. A prayer life begins when we make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of our life. I do not know the lifestyle of every individual in this room. And maybe there's someone here today that you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I would be amiss if I did not give you that opportunity today to confess Jesus Christ as Lord. Very soon, every individual in this world is going to stand before a just and holy God and give an account of their life here on earth. And at that time, there will no longer be an opportunity to ask forgiveness. That's why it's so important that we ask forgiveness while we're still here on earth to let Jesus Christ be Lord and Savior of our life. And if you're here this morning and you do not know Jesus Christ, and you want to ask Jesus Christ to come in today to forgive you of all your sin, to cleanse you of all unrighteousness, to live your life according to his word all the days of your life. Just slip up your hand. I want to pray with you. I want to agree with you and believe God for a new beginning, for a fresh start in your life. You're here today and you say, Pastor, I need Jesus to come into my life. I need Jesus to come into my life. The Bible is clear that everyone has sinned and come short of the glory of God. That sin comes with a great price, but the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Very soon we will stand before God. It's going to be too late if you do not know Jesus. That's why he came into this world, to suffer and die on the cross of Calvary. The word of God says he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Maybe you're here today and you're not as close as you once were to the Lord. But you say, Pastor, I want to rededicate my life to God today. I want to start over again. And I want my life to live, to be lived for God from this moment forward. If that's you, just raise your hand. And maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, I'm just hungry for the Holy Spirit. I'm hungry to be filled with that anointing. I'm hungry for God to just fill me full to overflowing, to have that power, to have that anointing, to have the, the power of the Holy Spirit leading me and guiding me every day of my life. And maybe there's some here today that you may say, Pastor, I want to be a prayer warrior. I want to be someone who knows how to touch the throne room of heaven. And that should be every one of us in this room this morning. And I want to invite us as a church. Let's come to this front. You can stand, you can kneel, you can sit at an altar. But let's come and let's draw close to him and say, Lord, I'm here. Lord, I ask you to fill me again with your power. I ask for your anointing. I ask you for your strength. I ask you for that power. And he will enable you to do the work that he has called you to do. He will sustain you. He will lift you. He will guide you. He will uphold you with his hand of righteousness. Just trust in him. And he will make a difference.